this morning the Lord highlighted chapter 14 and chapter 15. I think the Lord wants to take us to 17 and 18 tonight. Hadn't the Lord been good to us? I bless the Lord. Heavenly Father, strengthen, Lord, stir thy people. We live in the midst of a wicked and adulterous and idolatrous nation. Lord, like Isaiah's, unclean, unclean, unclean. Lord, we're drowning in it. But I pray, Lord, that you'd take a hot coal from off the altar, oh, yes, yes, yes. set it on our lips and on our tongue and sanctify us and May a seraphim in a little while, the seraph be whirling around this place with fiery wings and we hear a message from heaven, thine iniquity is purged and thy sin taken away. And then we all could pray, Lord, here am I, send me. Lord, bless Brother Stroud as he comes for the following days and bless the meeting, bless the journey that will be going down to the St. Lucia. Lord, I pray that thy hand be heavy upon us this week, Lord, in the power of God. Yes. Tonight, rest upon us, Lord, as you already have begun. In Jesus' name, all the Lord's people said. Amen. Thank the Lord. In Genesis 12 through 18 is my interest, and the Lord landed us in 14 and 15 today. The, uh, I, I see so many ink pens out, so put this in your notes, whether you write in your Bible or write in your notes. <clears throat> put this. Uh, and this is very simple, and there are uh, many other studies that God's men have done that would uh, be richer and deeper, but this was my thoughts this morning. And so mark this down, the life of Abraham. Look at me for one moment. Romans chapter 4 calls Abraham the father of the faith. And it calls him the father of us all, Jew and Gentile. And it calls him the father of many nations. I think, now you may need to double check this, but I think Romans 4 calls him a father at least four times, maybe five. So Romans chapter 4 is worth your study as we look at these things. Now, I'll not be going there because I'll get too many happy bubbles <laughs> if I get over there looking at that imputed righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Mm, see, yeah. let's see there? Yeah. Mm, it nearly got me anyhow. Ah, <laughs> and the Jerry Clower sound this morning was brand new to me. That's the first time. I was like, whoa, that's the uh, first time that y'all are bringing stuff out of me. Hallelujah. So that's Romans 4, worth your study, worth your mention. I wish y'all would give me a large glass of water. <laughs> you can baptize with that. It's lovely. It's wonderful. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Amen. Can I have a little cup of water? No, a large glass. So in Genesis 12, mark these things down. Some of the early steps of our, the father of the faith and, and uh, Abraham. And by the way, uh, young people and maybe new Christians, we're right here at Genesis 12. Look at me for one moment in my Bible. Look here, let me find Genesis 1. Let me get it really exactly. Bear with me. Oh, <laughs> Hold on. Okay, right here. Look at here, youngins. I need y'all to understand something. We know according to Luke, Luke's genealogy. Now, Matthew's genealogy has 42 names in it. It's a very Jewish right. number. Right. 
and uh, Luke's genealogy is slanted heavily on the Gentile side. Yes. And it takes you from Adam, the son of God, Adam, all the way to Jesus. Right. So we have the rabbis and we have their records and we have the scripture and we have its records. Right. So we have a timeline for everybody that had to been around evolutionary teaching and atheistic teaching that we have in our, in our, uh, in our nation. Uh, the earth may be old because he created it of old. The chicken came before the egg, right. and then we scrambled them, <laughs> uh, and then fried them. And if you're on a diet, we baked them. Uh, but anyway, uh, and God created Adam a full-grown man, not a little infant baby. And so the earth was created old. But we know that mankind from creation has been here 6,000 years. Okay, that's your timeline. And so 6,000 years. Look at this. Genesis 1 through 11 is the first 2,500 years. So once you get a little, almost half of the last 6,000 years is right there. Uh, right there. And, and then, and then and this is where Romans 1 comes in that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, became vain. And, and a lot went on there. Let's don't open that. Me and him will go to Waffle House and discuss Genesis 6 and other things. Y'all are not allowed. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. Just me and him. And then the Lord had to destroy the earth with a flood. Almost half of the 6,000 years is right there. Now, what about that? And then the Lord went and got a man named Abraham and said, we're going to do something. We're going to, I'm going to send my son. Y'all ain't helping me. I said that one night, Pastor, and a little old woman over here, she is mean as three devils. She said, well, you ain't helping us. <laughs> it was... It was probably a very honest moment, and you know, <laughs> she said that, and and I did, and I'm not as mean as I appear. I, I immediately submitted to her. I was like, oh, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am." That's <laughs> kind of felt like she was right, you know. <laughs> so every time I holler that now, uh, the little old devils, she's a living right here. I'm like, I don't even know her now. <laughs> and so. God said we're going to have to do something about how wicked man is. Right. Yeah. I'm going to send my son. Bless the Lord. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to raise up a seed. Yes. Right. Yes. You study Galatians. Yeah. He promised Abraham a son, a seed, yeah. and he was not talking about Isaac. Right. 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 Isaac had to be part of the picture. But you read Galatians, thy seed, not Isaac, but Christ. Mm, I hope I'm helping you. <laughs> oh, Lord. So there began a journey. Now, let me find Matthew. Bear with me. There it is. Found it exactly. Okay. That's 2,500 years. That's, that's only 1,500 years. Yeah, right. But when he got started on the program to send us his son, look, look at all that. Yeah. Y'all like, <laughs> I hope I'm helping you. Yeah. Look at there. Yeah. Look at there. That's 1,500 years. Yeah. Now, here's the last. Yeah, here's the last 2,000 years. Me and you's fixing to move over into the concordance and the maps. <laughs> Not really, maybe, I don't know. But, whoo, I'm fixing to go to the Holy Land and wander all over all them X's and red ones and green ones. And yeah. mm. Okay. So he began a journey with Abraham. So let's watch 
how faith works. So here's your notes quickly. Chapter 12. Over chapter 12, write the word separation. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Okay, separation. Chapter 13, write this. Sanctification. Mm. Mm. Had him a famine back there in chapter 12 and run to Egypt. Can I say it like this? The new, the new Christian run back to the world before he got out of his first chapter. Yeah, right. Amen. Help me now. Yeah. But then he, the Lord helped him figure some stuff out. Yeah. And guess where he went to? He went, I'm about to eat them flowers and shout. Yeah, go ahead. This, there's some interesting things in there. <laughs> mm. Pastor it said, he went back to the altar where he started. <laughs> Chapter 13, verse 3, where his tent had been at the beginning between the house of God and Hai. Do y'all know what Hai means? I don't either. I hadn't looked at it today. <laughs> verse 4, under the place. We need to find out though, don't we? That'd be interesting between the house of God and Hai. I guarantee you I'll know before midnight. I'll call Brother Stroud and have him relay it to you. Hey, uh, under the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, can I stop and say, some of you need to get back to your first love. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The reason I'm calling this sanctification is the first mention of the word separate. He had a carnal brother that was traveling with him, a nephew. How come them nephews is always a problem in the Bible? Do you know John Mark was a nephew of Barnabas? One of your first good church splits. Don't you love a good church split? Well, you better because you're going to have a bunch of them for the things done. The old man of God the other day said we had a church split the other day. He said, I think it's been my favorite one so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh heavens and there Paul what at the end of Acts 14 or the end of Acts 15 one of those had showed up down there and he didn't get saved till Acts 9 he didn't get going till Acts 11 and 12 and he ain't even to chapter 16 done had a fine church split if getting your little feelings hurt in the work of God's going to bump you out, you might want to run on back down there somewhere and sit down. Yeah, right, right. I need a little help. Yeah, right. Well, we're going to find a dead church. We're going to find a backslid church. We're going to find a modern church because there's just too much fussing and fighting down there. Let me tell you something, dear friend, while I'm here in Kentucky. Let me tell you something. The devil only goes to church where God goes to church. He's got the other ones right where he wants them. Get on over there and sit like a bump on a log. There'll be no fussing, there'll be no fighting, there'll be no conflict, there'll be no warfare. It'll be easy street. And by the way, you'll die on the vine and your young'uns will probably never get saved. I need some help. Well, find you one of them big modern mega churches. Come to church like it's a picnic and hang out with all them effeminate elders that they got. Y'all ain't talking to me. The fog machine, whoever, the little lady over here, you got you a fine woman preacher in the works over here, Pastor. I, we got to marry her to a, to, to a preacher boy quick. She's got some sermons on her heart. How? Oh. <laughs> that was pretty weird. I've done it again. Well, mm, Satan only goes to church where God goes to church. He owns and operates the rest of them. Lester Olaf used to say, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Right. Shall I sail on flowery beds of ease while others go through the bloody battles? 
Get in your church. Get full of God. Put on your armor and let's fight the good fight. Ephesians 6, for we wrestle. That's how you know you're a real Christian. If it's a real wrestling match. That's how you know you're in a real church. If it's a real wrestling match. Okay. Now, he come down here, Abraham, see, verse, I'm in chapter 13, verse 7. There was a strife because he had Lot with him. Verse 5, there's Lot. Verse 9, first mentioned in your Bible, the word separate. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. Okay, Lot went to Sodom, and Abraham ended up heading out to the will of God. Now, I need you to look at me. You better get back to your altar and you better get the carnality out of your life. Y'all don't make me break that down. Okay, I'll break it just a little because I'm heading for two other chapters. The first mention of the word separate in your Bible is not a saved man separating from the world. It's a saved spiritual man telling a saved carnal man you got to go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's good. He had enough boldness to tell him, you can't be in my life. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yet he had enough humility to step back then and say, now, you choose first where you want to go. And I'll take whatever's left. Yeah. Only when you're full of God do you have that kind of boldness and that kind of humility all at the same time. It's good. We don't operate in anger. No. We don't operate in arrogance. Amen. You don't operate in ambition. Right. That's not going to go well. Right. Yeah. We operate in boldness yes. slash humility Good. at the same time. Good. Go to chapter 14. We, we, we got separation, sanctification. Chapter 14, there's spiritual warfare. Now, there's two hours of preaching need to be done right here. We touched it this morning. King of Sodom, King of Salem. After that great battle. Spiritual warfare. Now come to chapter 15. We have security. We have security. It came in a promise. And it came in a covenant. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. I thought about that iron dome that Israel's got intercepts most of them bombs. How many did they send the other week? Over 200, hundreds of them all at one time. Brother, you and I have a shield and a reward. This is Abraham's security because it came not just in a promise, but it came not in a spoken promise, but in a sworn promise. The Lord made a covenant. I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time right here but there's one of the most beautiful pictures of Calvary in Genesis 15. Do y'all remember Hebrews 6 talking about for when God made promise to Abraham when he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself? Don't you find it interesting that all of those, and I'm not picking on anybody, all those with a Pentecostal base, and I know some sweet Pentecostal people, and I know some saved Pentecostal people, I'm not trying to slander them. But that, that doctrine come out of Protestantism. Right. The Pentecostals come from the Methodist Wesleyan holiness right. of the late 1800s. Right. Yes, sir. And the Methodists, as much as I love John and Charles Wesley, I was just in John Wesley's church in England this past year. Love them boys. Appreciate them. They got more hymns in our Baptist songbook than any Baptist has. Right. But in the late 1800s, the Methodists got to looking for something in the wrong place. They got to looking for sinless perfection on earth through the work of the Spirit. When somebody, they miss out on the fact that we already have sinless perfection through the Savior in another world. Oh, I, need, I don't know if y'all got that good as I felt it. They were looking for sinless perfection through the work of the Spirit and didn't know we already had it through the work of the Son. I don't need an experience to get something that I already got when I got Christ. Hallelujah. 
So, Hebrews 6, isn't that interesting? That's one of their main passages yeah. that they go to to lose their salvation. Right. They just forgot the second half of the chapter. Yeah. Yeah. He's swearing in blood yeah. in the second half of chapter 6. <laughs> And that's where he said, and he ends chapter 6, for we have an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil. Good heavens, how are you going to lose your salvation in the chapter where you got your anchor that's already entered in? Oh, I'm eating these next. This is a very interesting little thing you happened in there. So, Hallelujah. This is the covenant that Hebrews 6 talks about. It's right here in Genesis 15. Look at me not wanting to get into this as I go into this. Chapter 15, verse 5, our brother testified back here. That's where they're going to look at the stars. Oh, mm, I hope I'm helping you. Huh? Huh? Y'all know what he promised Abraham? It's Sunday night. You're here on purpose. You want a little extra? Did he not promise him the stars of the, of the sky and as the sand of the sea? Y'all know what them two was, don't you? That's that spiritual kingdom and that physical kingdom. Them stars in the sky, that's what he was going to give us when he saved everybody in the church age. We're a heavenly people. Amen. Sand of the sea. That's them Jews. That's that natural seed on the earth. Yeah. Here in a little while at the second coming, you're going to see both the church and Israel right where he's wanted them the whole time. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Tell the star. Did it say tell? Y'all leave me alone. There's too much in here. Tell the stars. That's like a bank teller. Yeah. Sister, that little tell is like the teller. Let's go see the teller. Mm-hmm. Mm. What does a teller do? Mm-hmm. Mm you dig into that. I need to say this. Circle the word abroad. I've got my little time piece here. I'll try to let y'all out right before angry 30. <laughs> Chapter 15, verse 5. And he brought him forth. What's that next word? Abroad! If you're going to go anywhere with God, I did me a word study right there, Pastor. Not, and unlike hey I, I know what this word means. Abroad. I memorized it. Didn't mean to. It just was so big to me. Abroad. Away from one's usual place. When you travel abroad. Do y'all remember it was that Elisha come down there and the little widow said, my husband served you and I'm fixing to lose my two sons to the creditors? He said, go borrow the empty vessels. You know what he said over there in Kings? Go, go, go borrow the vessels abroad. He said, I'll tell you how you're going to fix your problem. Go get some empty vessels, but you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, that's good. Good. Some of y'all won't never be able to count stars with the Lord and, and enter into what he has for you because you ain't going to leave your little you ain't going to leave your little security blankets. Uh -oh. Bumping into somebody's wagon at Walmart's going to be the biggest adventure of your little grumbly life. <laughs> That'll be the biggest thing happened to you all month. You went to Walmart. I dare you to get out of your usual, which is pretty adventuresome <laughs> in its own. But oh, dear neighbor, you get around a Holy Ghost church, you get around a Holy Ghost man, you get around the gospel call, and I promise you, if you go far, you're going to have to get out of your little comfort zone. Right, right, right. Oh, he'll call you out there. All right. So he made that covenant. I can't go into that. It's one of the first beautiful pictures of Calvary. A great darkness took over Abram. That's the three hours of darkness of Calvary. A, a smoking furnace. God the Father. 
and a burning lamp, oil on fire, the Holy Ghost, and five bloody sacrifices, the Lord Jesus. And God made a covenant with himself, by himself, to himself, yes. within himself. Yes. Yes. Heard old Johnny Pope from Houston preach that God walked that figure eight through that blood covenant. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. And Abraham was over there in a deep sleep, just like Adam was in a deep sleep when Eve was brought forth. And just like a great darkness came on Calvary when Christ's bride was brought out of his side. Go to 16. And see what happened in 15. God gave his spoken word and then he followed it up with his sworn word. So we're moving on to chapter 16. Now here we run into, now write this down, and there's probably a better, there's probably something better here, but it's just the way it's in my heart. Sarai, she takes over. Chapter 16. Now, Sarai. I done told you all this morning. One who manipulates. Can I, hey, can I tell y'all the worst thing we could do after God gets us going in our chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15? Why, maybe pastor, we should call this self. Self. Why would you take over right after he gave you his sworn word? Yeah. Long time went by, nothing happened. So Sarah injected herself. She inserted herself. She took over something that God and Abraham had going on and she said, it ain't happening fast enough. I don't think it's gonna happen. I believe I'll just insert myself and manipulate this situation. Here's Hagar, here's Abraham. I, God ain't coming up with a son. I'll come up with one. I need y'all to help me right there. A lot of chapters into the journey and let me ask the older folks something. You young folk, you might not be honest or you may not be there yet, but these older ones will be honest. <laughs> Y'all remember looking back over your life the few times you thought you better take it over and work it out? Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> oh, you're going to make a mess. He was 86 when this happened. He was 99 before God spoke to him again. 13. Go down to verse 16. 16, 16. Abram was four scare, score and six years old. And in chapter 17, verse 1, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 13's a number yeah. of rebellion. Right. It's a number of lawlessness. Right. You want to get real theologically technical, you take me and him to Waffle House and we'll have a discussion on this. 13 is actually the number of the Antichrist. Right. Yes, sir. Look what she produced. She produced a wrong son, a false son. Yeah. Yeah. Ishmael's a, not one of the strongest types of the Antichrist, but a smaller one. Yeah. Yeah, right. He was anti. Yes. Yeah, right. He opposed Isaac when Isaac got here. He laughed at him. He ridiculed him. Yes. Right. I told you, there's bombs going off this week. Because self got in the story. Yeah. Good. You ever see it get in the church, Pastor? Oh, yeah. Self. Yeah. Here comes the Sarai yeah. in us. Yeah. Amen. Well, I can work this out. I need to take control. I can make this happen. Yeah. Can I stop and do a little church preaching for all the Christians and for all the young preachers in here? If a church ain't having children, you don't need to go down to Egypt to make something happen. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> there are mega churches all over America. You want to know what they're doing? Well, Americans just don't want church. We can't get them there. We're going to bring Egypt in the picture. 
we're, we're going we're gonna to start a big romantic relationship with the world and then we can produce. I have news for you. We don't need to run down and start a relationship with Egypt to get the church to produce fruit. Don't get me started. Don't get me started on that. Just let me say this to you. Thank God you're sticking with the old time stuff. Every church is one pastor away from going completely apostate. You better keep stuff like that right there on the wall. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but keep it on the wall too. I got a feeling it's a prayer for a reason. <laughs> Y'all know the story, I don't, but I'm for 1064. Sign me up. I have no idea, but it's got to mean something. 1611 and 1064. Keep it on the wall. Tell me later why I'm for it. But I'm for it. Hallelujah. I got enough confidence in him to be for it. I go to, I've been going to church my entire life. Every church has something in it that nobody else does. It's crazy. It always does. It's every single church. Yeah. 1064. Hallelujah. Whatever it means. I'm with you. I'll fight to the death for it. Whatever it is. Oh, dear. okay. We don't need to bring the world in the bedroom to produce children in the church. I don't need a soft rock concert. Pastor, I'm, I'm going to look at you when I say I'm going to try to be very appropriate, not trying to be cute or crude. Pastor, and there's children here, I'll be real careful. But I, You had to get Abraham out of the room. Put him, put him in another bedroom. Yeah. And he had to get the real bride out. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be appropriate, Pastor. Am I okay? Yeah. Abram went into Hagar. Yeah. I guarantee you Sarah wasn't in there. Right. Right. Yeah. You know what they got to do to get the wrong bride in here? They got to get the real bride out. Yeah. They're kicking the old church people out all over this nation. You're right. God help. There's a 12 step program how to take your church, transition it from an old timey church to a contemporary church. They got a, they got a program. They do. And about step number six is get the old members who want to keep a King James Bible and the old songbook and how to get rid of them. Mm. Oh Honey, if you're going to bring the harlot in, you got to take the bride out. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And Hagar was not a harlot. She was an Egyptian. Right. Yeah. Shouldn't have been there in the first. Mm. When they made that little journey down to Egypt, they came back with y'all ain't. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They went to Egypt and brought something back they shouldn't have. Right. Right. I wonder, y'all got some things you picked up in Egypt. And oh yeah, you're on your journey with God. You're well on your journey with God. And yet there's something you still got that ain't supposed to be there. Uh-oh, uh-oh, good for good. Cut it off. Yeah. Amen. Cut it out. It's what they ended up having to do. Right. Cast her out. Right. Yeah. Abram said, but I've had a son. Cast him out, God said. Yeah. Sarah said, cast her out. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you said bring her in. Yeah. Mm -mm. Whatever you brought in out of the will of God, it won't be a chapter or two. You'll be hollering at everybody, get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. Well, you're the one brought it in. Yeah, right. Amen. Mm. Okay, Sarah. Now, go to chapter 17. You don't need to manipulate things to have what God has for you. Now go to 17. I'm almost to the end of the introduction. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like the false prophet. I gave him false peace right there. 
Now, chapter 17, write this. <laughs> Sarah. I got Sarah in the other. But now we got Sarah with the emphasis on that H. The Lord showed up after 13 years of silence. He said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and multiply. Verse 3, what did he do this time? And Abram fell on his face. Hmm. You know what he done the last time God come talk to him like that? He laughed. It may take 13 years of silence for you know how to act right when God shows up. Don't laugh at him. Now he learned his lesson. The Lord showed up now. And Abraham does a face plant. Bam! And God said, all right, I'm here to resume business. Not because y'all been good, because you've been bad. But we made a covenant. Yeah. Ooh, there was a blood covenant in another chapter yeah. and I've done sworn this thing to you y'all may have been bad but we're going to keep carrying on with the program if you'll get right yeah. Yeah. that ought to help you yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. so there comes verse 5 Abraham and down there he told her name would be Sarah somewhere to, yeah yeah verse 15 that's for Sarah that's what I call her name Sarah and God breathed grace upon him now look in verse 17 interesting then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed <laughs> did you know it's okay to still struggle with your old nature as long as you're on your face when you're standing up laughing at God, you're in trouble. It's okay to still wrestle with your old nature as long as you're on your face wanting to do right. I need some help. Okay. And Abraham, so he goes on here. Now go back to verse 11. And ye shall circumcise the flesh. He called for it. He called for it. God said, God, hey, everybody look at me. God said, we're going to bring the token sign of separation into the picture, and we're going to cut the excess flesh away. Can I get some help? Yeah. What do you think God's wanting to do in our life? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. This was the thing God chose, Pastor, would not you? But God will go down to the private hidden things, this very source of life, and he'll cut away the flesh. And I want to say to you, friend, that that's how God turns Sarai into Sarah. He cuts the flesh out of our life. Watch this. So he obeyed. Now, verse 24, verse 23, he took Ishmael, all born in his house, every male, circumcised the flesh of the foreskin the self same day, 24, Abraham was 99 when he was circumcised. Verse 25, Ishmael was 13 when he was circumcised. Hey, whatever you got from Egypt, you're going to have to deal with it yeah. right in the height of its rebellion. Right. And verse 26, there's the word circumcised again. And look at all, verse 27, all the men of Hapborn, all bought were circumcised. Good heavens, it's in every verse. For all the last few verses, it's in every verse. Now, I'm going to show you something in chapter 18. Watch this. If you will fall on your face and let God cut away your flesh, watch what happens. Chapter 18, and the Lord appeared. <laughs> I'm about to run, Pastor. With my gout and diabetes and blood pressure, I'm going to run. I'll know I'm running. Y'all won't. You'll be like, what's wrong with him? And the Lord appeared. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he will. Yeah. Yeah. If you'll fall on your face. Yeah. If you'll get on your face and get rid of your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> You're never going to change that old nature, not until we go to glory. 
but you can sure let the Lord take the two-edged sword and cut the flesh out of your private life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Is anybody with me? Yeah. Amen. And the Lord appeared. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Amen. I've heard you talking. I hear it on your heart, Pastor. I hear. I can feel it on the heart of the people. We want revival. Yeah. Yeah. We want God to move. We need yeah. God this week. Yeah. I feel it on you heavy. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know when he's going to appear? Yeah. He's waiting on something. You get on your face. Yeah. He's waiting on you to cut away, let the Lord cut away that private flesh. Yeah. Help me now. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And the Lord appeared. Yeah. I'd like for him to show up again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two things happened, and I'll be done. Two things happened. Write these down. I, and you know, I, I didn't even do this. The Lord did it. They, they alliterate all by themselves. First, there was a supper. And then there was a supplication. Yes. They got under a tree and had the Lord had a supper yes. with the Lord. Yes. And then the last half of this chapter. Do y'all remember when they, and, and my, I'm not reading all of it. Do you remember when Abraham said, oh Lord, if there's 50 down there, yes. would you spare them? Yes. If there's 40, if there's 30, ended up with 10. As far as we know, this is the first intercessory prayer in the Bible. So I'm going to deal with them two things and I'll deal with them as, about as quick as I dealt with the other things. If we'll get it right, if we'll let God breathe grace in chapter 17. <sighs> And change our name and change our nature. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what's coming? Yeah. You fixing to have the Lord's Supper yeah. with right. Him. Yeah. 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 And then you're going to be able to have the Lord's supplication. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be able to pray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do y'all think about that? Yeah. This is lovely. This is lovely. Look in chapter 18. Now I'm not going to be at these either two. I'm just going to touch them. It's all we need out of them. Oh, I love this. We're not going to expound, exhaust, exegete these things exhaustively. But just look at them. Verse 2. Lo, three men stood by. <laughs> There's three from heaven. I'm about to shout. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I don't think this is the Trinity, but I think it is a picture of the Trinity. Right, right. It was the Lord and two angels, but I like it. Three of them showed up. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Oh, I'd like for God to show up. I'd like for all of God to show yeah, up. Yeah, right. yeah, Three men. He ran to meet them, bowed himself toward the ground. My Lord, if now I found favor. And then verse four, let a little water wash your feet. Whoop! Oh, here we go. We're in John 13 all of a sudden. Yeah. We're having a foot washing and fixing to have a supper. Y'all yeah. better act right. I will preach all night. Yeah. You'll be praying for Brother Stroud to get here. He's long-winded too. Oh, you better act right. He said, let's have a foot washing before we break out the bread. Ooh. Every church needs a good foot washing. Amen. Quickly here so the pastor don't have to fix things for the next four days. We know, it, we know that foot washing is not one of the ordinances of the church. But it, but it ought not hurt your feelings if you ever get in one. And I know it's not a custom in the eastern part of the world, in the western part of the world. You know, that it's not necessary. We don't walk around in sandals in the desert and come in in the evening and have a big supper with everybody. And they didn't sit in chairs at a table. And still to this day, there's cushions and pillows built up and lounging around. And so if you're going to lounge next to me and your head's there and your feet's here, I'd appreciate you washing your old sandal feet, please. <laughs> I don't want to have supper and be accidentally rubbing your foot and you ain't washed it. Help me now. So it was a custom. The servant at the door would wash their feet. 
They'd come in and lounge around for that supper. Supper was a big deal. It wasn't five minutes at Wendy's and we run home. Everybody on seven different schedules. Why do you think we're all losing our mind in this nation? Do you know you're supposed to go to bed when the sun sets? Do you know you're supposed to work all day and the women are supposed to do the work God's called them to do and the men do the work they're called to do and then we all have a big supper with the family. It's supposed to last a long time and you fellowship. Then you go to bed. What about that? You might keep your marriage and you might keep your mind if you got back in the Bible way. Yeah, right. Leave me alone. Yeah. Okay, so that's why they wash the feet. Now, that's one reason we don't sit in it. We wear socks and shoes and we don't lounge around a supper table. Now, if we get over in the hills, there might still be some barefoot people <laughs> with your foot in your face while they're eating. I don't know. <laughs> So, here we had a foot washing. And I'm going to tell you all this. If we need anything, we need a big dose of humility in our churches. Yes, sir. If you'd have been by that night in John 13, and somebody told you going by that upper room, hey, there's a king in that room. Matter of fact, the king of all kings yeah. is in that room yeah. and you walk by there and peeked yeah. you'd have come back over and found us and said I, I, I didn't see a king I, I, I saw a servant yeah. Yeah. all I saw was some men in there and I saw one man on his hands and knees washing their feet yeah. I didn't see a king I saw a servant yeah that's our king <laughs> I'm going to tell you something we are Americans our egos are our biggest problems the gods of ambition and success you be careful of that whatsoever thy hand finds to do do it all thy, with all thy might to the glory of God not to the glory of yourself mm. There's a foot washing. And then there's a supper. Yeah. What about it? Look here, Pastor. He said, under the tree. Where's the tree at? Sunday school teacher, help me. Where's the tree? Oh, it's. I'm looking for it. Tent door, favor, a little water. Oh, it's in verse 4. And rest yourselves under the tree. Pastor got it. I'm waiting on the rest of y'all to get it. <laughs> we have a tree that we're resting under. <laughs> rest yourselves under the tree. Oh, man ought to take an hour and preach on that rest. Verse 5, and I'll fetch a morsel of bread. <laughs> now we're moving over into John 14 and comfort ye your hearts oh my verse 6 a picture of the trinity again make ready quickly three measures of fine meal knead it and make cakes he fetched a calf tender and good verse 8 took butter and milk and the calf set it before them there, there we are now there's a supper under the tree yeah. oh bless the Lord yes. before I close with my last point and I want to drive it home let me just say this to you he gave us the Lord's supper right before he left yes. and the next thing we're heading for yeah. I'll see y'all there shortly yeah. Yeah. Amen. won't be no Elvis burrito we better eat all them we can why we can Oh, but dear neighbor, y'all understand what a day that'll be. I personally believe families will be grouped together. I believe church families will be grouped together. I believe church families are going to go through the judgment seat of Christ together in Revelation 2 and 3. And I personally believe church families will be seated together at the marriage supper. You served together, you stayed together. You suffered together. 
You bowed before each other and loved each other together. You fought battles together. Prayed together. We wept with those that wept. We rejoiced with those. We're, y'all think you're going to split us all up at the banquet? Mm, no. And then at that second coming, pastor couldn't get away from it the day a little too excited. When do you know we're going to get raptured out? Yeah. The actual second coming seven years later, yeah. you don't know something about the second coming? We're coming with him. Yeah. 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 We'll be on white horses behind the Son of God when the heaven rolls back like a scroll. Right. And the unholy trio, beast, false prophet, antichrist down there gathered around Jerusalem. I know who the antichrist is. I'm going to announce it here tonight. It's one of the meanest, wickedest men you'll ever meet. Yep. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor, I apologize. He made me do it. The mischievousness is coming off of him and he don't even say a word. He just goes, <laughs> and I feel like being Henry for 30 minutes just sitting on the same bench with him. We're going to Waffle House. We're coming with, and I believe churches will be in the little battalion together. And it don't stop there. When you come back in the millennial reign, I believe churches are going to live on the same block. <laughs> Amen. Woo. Oh, what a day that'll be. Now, if you'll get on your face and deal with your flesh, you can end up having a great supplication. Look at this last prayer. Look at this prayer in the last part of this chapter. Probably the first intercessory prayer. Chapter 18. Mm. Mm. Verse 17. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Mm. Verse 19. This is, my, this is how my dad ran his home. You young men with homes, you better read this verse, verse nine, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that thing which he has spoken of. I wonder if God's got confidence in you to run your home. He sure trusted Joseph. What about, everybody talks about God picked out Mary. Christmas is coming. It's 85% pagan, but I take the 15%, make it all Baptist, and give gifts. <laughs> Set up a tree. <laughs> it's probably 95% pagan. <laughs> but I just, when I walk in the door, I take the Catholic off my tree, sanction it into a Baptist tree immediately. It becomes a Baptist tree. A Baptist tree. <laughs> right there. So, he sure trusted Joseph. What about God said, here's a man who I'm going to let him raise my son. Would God trust you to raise children for him? Gentlemen, you can't be running around at work flirting with other women and God trust you. Can't be pecking on them keyboards looking up old high school flames gentlemen adultery will burn your whole world down can the Lord trust you to raise children for him ladies you gonna be Sarai or Sarah watch this now so we can move down here the Lord said I'm gonna show him verse 23 and Abraham drew near Oh, I want to be that kind of man that can draw near to God. And look in verse 27. Right in the middle of this wonderful intercessory prayer, we have another first mention. Mentions ashes. Verse 27, Abraham answers, said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord which am but dust and ashes. That's your first mention in your Bible, the word ashes. And you find it in the middle of the first intercessory prayer. 
had an old preacher from Mississippi come by my church when I pastored in my 20s. Old Brother Pat McNair. He brought a bottle of ashes. I'd bring him in. He was my Old Testament preacher. I was in my 20s. I knew I didn't have enough knowledge of the Old Testament to teach it and preach it even halfway good, you know. He was my Old Testament preacher. Pat McNair laid down on Percy Ray's deathbed right when they pulled his body off. He laid down on it and everybody left the room and asked God for a double portion. He'd done the same thing with Joe Parsons. He was there. Probably the two of the most powerful men in the 1900s. And they were from another era. They were the last of that. Because in 1948 when Israel... That drawing power backed off the Gentiles, went back to the Jews. We're in another world now. We're in apostasy. Right. Them men for, from another era. Yeah. No, Brother Pat laid down on the deathbed. He lived at death's door for 30 years, in and out of hospitals. He was dying for 30 something years before he died. Wow. He'd hobble around there and come to our place. He brought a bottle of ashes. I'd bring him in. Tell them to spend a whole week, and I had 25 young preachers and preachers in our church, pastors that the Lord had called, and I'd set a whole week aside for them, just for them, and anybody that wanted to. And Brother Pat brought that bottle of ashes in there, and he shook them around all week and waved them all week. Challenged us, ashes. Here's what he said: It's that which has been that which has been reduced down to its lowest form and it can't be reduced no more mm-hmm. fire can't burn it mm-hmm. right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. and you know what God wants to bring out of our lives mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. till there's nothing left yeah. but you in your lowest form And then you can crawl up and the Lord can tell people around him, I trust him. I'm going to tell him what we're going to do. Oh, and he's going to ask me to maybe not do it. And I'll listen to him. (laughs) I can't go that far with a hyper-Calvinist, see. The Lord... He's more flexible than them boys' eternal decrees are. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jonah, you gonna tell him what I'm fixing to do? And one old king, like, we're sorry. Yeah. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> Glory. Yeah. Yeah. And Abraham, we're headed. What are you three men doing here? Lord, what are you doing here with these two angels, these two men? We're headed over yonder. Going to burn it down. Oh, Lord, would you not? Well, let's sit down and I'll listen to you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Mm. And you know, Abraham Abraham didn't get everything he prayed for, but he got what he's really after. He got Lot out of there. Yeah. Yeah. He got his family out of there. Yeah. You may pray for the whole world, but God may bless that prayer just by saving your family. Yeah, yeah. Mm, good. Heard old man preach, whoever's playing the piano, slip over there and softly play. I heard an old man, Brother Foster, preach on Noah, the man who couldn't win a single convert, who won the whole world. Yeah, yeah look at that. He preached, what, 120 years righteousness. Yeah. Couldn't get one convert. Got his family in the ark. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't get one convert. And the old preacher said, and he ended up saving the whole world. Yeah. Yeah, glory. <laughs> yeah. My whole ministry's been a failure. An old man may say, well, sir, you may have to see it from heaven, but you're actually going to save the whole world. Yeah. Oh, dear neighbor, who is it you're wanting to pray for? 
You know what old Joe Parsons said about intercessory prayer? Joe Parsons, six foot five, gentle giant, was a hit man for Al Capone in the hobo days of riding the train, the 50s. Based out of Charlotte, he often mentioned Cincinnati, Cleveland, Chicago. He's a hit man for Al Capone. And would catch a train. And he'd talk about Charlotte, Chattanooga, Cincinnati, Cleveland. <laughs> well, Brother Joe got saved. He said he'd be in the corner of a box car and 40 hobos on the other end of the car staring at him. Blood on his hands, a hot pistol in his old wore out coat pocket. And he said the Shekinah glory of God would fill the little car and surround him. He said his mama's prayers. He said the Lord sat with me more before I was saved than he ever did afterward. Wow. He said I'd weep and tremble as God hovered around me. He said, there'd be the other hobos in the other end just looking with big eyes. Said he got to where he couldn't run no more and he crawled out in the briar patch and said about three days laid in the briar patch in Carolina. God saved him. Capone sent three different men to kill him. He never tried to stop them. He'd get up, hug their neck, Tell him he's going to miss them. Let me pray with you. I'm not going to cause you no trouble. I'll sit down over here and you do what you're supposed to do. But I'm going to pray with you in the first. And first two, their revival, revolver wouldn't fire. They'd tremble. Said one screamed and ran out the door while Joe was praying. Said the other and fell on his face and wept. And Brother Joe said he told him, I'll call Al and tell him you tried. I don't want you in trouble. <laughs> Third man showed up and said, don't even, just go ahead and pray and I'll leave. <laughs> what about that? Joe Parson would get up early morning hours, get full dressed with a suit, and sit on his bed Indian style. And he said he'd wait on God to come in the room and then they'd start praying. He said the key to getting your prayers answered is don't pray your prayers. Pray his. Wait for him to show up and find out what's on his heart. And said the amazing thing and you pray his prayers, he'll go out of the room and answer yours and you didn't even ask. <laughs> oh God, Brother Joe said this. He said, when you see that face floating in front of you in that secret place, that's who you're supposed to pray for. That's who the Lord's praying for. He said, sometimes it's a preacher. Oftentimes it's a sinner. He said, many times I don't, can't remember the name, but I know the face. Whose face is floating in front of you tonight? You want to pray for a lot? You want to pray for Lot's children? Our heads are bowed. Would you stand? You play out loud, son. Y'all come pray. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always... Thanks for listening.